Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technology. I am your host, Orst, and today we're continuing our Postman journey uh, onto Postman scripts. Prior to this, we had looked at collections and uh, requests, and then moved on to workspaces and environments. If you'd like to check those out, you can take a look at the, uh, the links in the description below. So Postman scripts are just an execution of JavaScript. And really, there's two sections where we can do Postman scripts in the pre-request script tab or the test tab of a request. Basically, pre-request as implied is done before the request is executed and test is completed after the execution. And so um, you'll notice that there's many uh, similarities and what we can do in both of them. And I've prepared a few example uh, pieces of code or JavaScript that we can look at to show the benefits of executing uh, the JavaScript before and after the script. And so today, I'm going to start off with um, the pre-request script section. And here we're going to look at uh, one of the use cases um, that we can start off with. So many times when executing a request, we will tend to need some type of random data. Um, if you've ever worked with OAuth, sometimes you'll know you need a, a state, uh, something that's randomly generated. So just like with JavaScript, what we can do as an example is see uh, creating random uh, a random number. And so here is just an example of one thing we can do. We use the math uh, library in JavaScript and just apply random to it. And here we can pull out random data. And to make it even more convenient, we can add the set operation on pm.environment. And as you'll see here, what this does is it allows us to set an environment variable called rand and pull the random data that we just created and set it in there so that we can continue to use it further. So next, we have another example. This is one of more of my favorites. Uh, what I'm going to have to do here is to, I'm going to have to uh, launch the console, which I will cover this in the next video, but this allows us to see output data. So what I'm going to do here is obtain another section of code. Um, one thing that I've used Postman pre-request scripts for very often is for getting a token. So let's say I need to run, uh, execute a service, and this service requires authorization, and that authorization requires a token. Well, what I'll tend to do is I'll do a pre-request script of getting a uh, sending a request out to a, a service or a token provider, pull that token, and then insert it into the header or the authorization header so that I can continue running my, uh, my Postman request. So here you can see, in this case, I'm using just the Postman uh, boilerplate you know, basic auth um, endpoint. And I'm just trying to illustrate the example here that I can run this request within here and then pull out the response, which in this case is just some JSON that says authenticated. And then I can set that to an environment variable called token. And then I can consume that environment variable in the header. So once you'll see is I'll execute this and then we'll be able to see the output in our console. So if I go ahead and click send, we'll see in our console, ah, let me go ahead and fix this error real quick. And I'll go ahead and run it one more time. So we'll see that in here we ran a get to Postman Echo Basic Auth, and we'll notice that. 
the response body. has the JSON authenticated true. And then we continue to execute the second or the actual request. And just to show the actual setting of this environment variable, we can peek at it and see that token was set to true. So we were able to extract that authenticated uh, JavaScript or excuse me, JSON uh, attribute out and set it to true. Uh, excuse me, or to uh, the token value in uh, the environment variable. So another thing I'd like to go over is obtaining request body data from another service. So let's say I have a data source where I need to populate the body of a request with data from another service or data from a data source, a database, a text file, anything. Well, if we expose that data, let's say on an endpoint or a web service, we can do the same thing here and pull that data out. So the concept is very much the same. So in this case, what I've just pasted in here is we're going to run a get to postman uh, echo, and we're going to pull the JSON out the actual postman token value. And actually what would be better is we'll pull the cookie out. The cookie is a little easier to work with in terms of JSON notation. So now we'll set this request body to the JSON value and we'll see in our environment variable that we've actually obtained a new, a new cookie. So I can show you very quickly that within our postman script we were able to get the data that we were looking for so in the console here we did our postman get we have that cookie and the response body from the headers and now I take a look here, you can see that request body is equal to that cookie. And then one of the last things I'd like to show is just checking for input. So let's say in, in this request body that we're pulling from another service, we want to do a quick check. And we want to make sure that it contains data that we're expecting or uh, let's say it's containing uh, a string that has a certain substring. Well, in this case, we can run a test to do body matches string and go ahead and check that in this case, input text includes the value input. So we'll go ahead and run this as well. And we'll be able to see that within this script, we were able to pull the value out or check against the value for test. And so generally we see, in this case, our test results match showing body matches string, which is exactly the input validation we were doing here. So now for the sake of uh, cleanliness, I'm going to clear this out. And we're going to look at postman tests. So in a sense, tests are exactly the same as pre-request scripts, but they are executed after. So we're able to pull the response body out that we get from our normal postman request, and we can do some evaluation on it. So you notice in this case, this already comes with two default tests. We have response is okay, and it's pulling out pm.response, which is just the request response, and it does a check on it to say, does it have a status code of 200? Also, it all does a check on the JSON re request queries, showing that pm.to have 
JSON body, args foo one and bar one. And it's just checking to see if those values are there in addition to args foo two and bar two. So we'll go ahead and just re rerun that. And we can see that we passed the test for response body is okay. And then response body has JSON request queries. And so I have a few additional tests that we can put in here to show the power of what we can do in Postman tests. So here I'm copying another script I have on another window. And this is for checking JSON schema using tiny validator. And so what this does is it shows us and checks, does this match a JSON schema that we've predefined? And this is really good for testing just types and values within a response. So an example would be, let's say you are supposed to get a integer in a response, but you get a string back instead. So you get a string version of one, the number one versus an integer one. Um, something like this would catch that. So we can go ahead and run this test. And what this already is preset to is a couple of uh, variables with data in it and it's it's statically coded so it's not going to actually check against the response but we'll see the power of it within our, our tests here and in here you can see as an example we actually have a schema validation error so in this case the assertion expected false to be true one of these failed so we can see that we have items that type boolean here we have var data one and var data two it doesn't look like we actually matched the value in there so here's an example of it at failing and showing us that we don't have the correct value because here we have it set to one two three here we have true and false. So the first scenario actually passes, but the second one does not. And that's why we get this failure here. So if I would go ahead and delete this, we should get a pass. And as you'll see, we have schema is valid. So we were able to pass that test by removing the second data value out. Next, we're gonna cover converting data formats from XML to JSON. So I've already prepared some information here. So I have an example XML body. And then we're going to take that and create a JSON object out of it. And so what this does is allows us to use JSON type notation on this uh, XML, which uh, is generally a lot more common in um, RESTful services. Uh, and it's really powerful with JavaScript. So we'll go ahead and let's do a console log of this object. And what this will show us is how it looks after conversion. So go ahead and execute that. And so I will move our console window back and we can see this catalog object. So in the catalog, we have book, the array of books, which is one or zero and one. And you'll notice all these values here have been converted from XML to JSON. So we can see within here, we had the catalog tag, the book tag, the first book tag, the second book tag, and then all the data in there, author, title, genre, price, publish, date, and description. And those same things have now been converted into JSON notation.
And last two ones uh, we'll cover is um, sending off another request. So this is going to be a simpler example, but the same premise applies. Um, and here I've used uh, send request as well to do data persistence or data manipulation. So I'll give you an example. Uh, in my uh, job, I've had to do work with consuming management APIs and performing logic on them and then using that logic to pull data out and persisting the results of that. So in this case, I was doing some element tagging. And so in the initial request, I pulled out the elements and then I did based on what those elements were, I sent a put or post to persist the results of that into that management system. And so what that allowed me to do is automate that workflow and execute those or save those values so that I wouldn't have to go through each of them individually within the UI they provided. Um, but in this case, we're just running a Postman send request. So we'll see the same thing we've been seeing before, but it illustrates the power of what I can do with data after the test, or excuse me, after the request executes and put it in a test type uh, scenario or in general, just throw it in the script and it'll actually execute you know, that code. And then the last one we'll cover is Postman set next request. So this one, you're not going to really able to see the value of it just yet. But in the next video, it'll make a lot more sense. And I'll cover it back there again. So in here, we have this uh, code that says PM that set next request post form data. What this shows is that I'm going to next iteration of postman requests, I'm going to execute the request called post form data. And you'll notice on the left hand side, we have get request, post raw text and post form data. So what this would do is when we execute this in a runner scenario, we will move and skip post raw text and execute post form data. This is useful in scenarios where you have the requests on the left hand side lined up in a certain test scenario fashion where let's say um, initializing data or creating data, performing manipulations on that data, and then deleting the data. This will run through those uh, in uh, exec the execution uh, iteratively or in order that we have it on the left hand side. However, let's say if we need to skip something in the middle, such as here post raw text, we're able to do that. And this will make a lot more sense in the next video when I go over console and uh, runner features of Postman. So that about wraps it up for this video. Uh, if you really liked it, please give me a thumbs up. I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell for notifications for uh, more, more videos like this. I'll put this uh, code in here, the sample code in the, in the, uh, the comments, or excuse me, the description. And um, feel free to ask any questions. I'll leave you off with uh, one more tip. Um, a lot of this code that I actually used was generated from these snippets on the right hand side. And so these snippets give you some good boilerplate code to really start off with. But in this case, I expanded on it a little more so that we're able to show the run through of some of these snippets that are a little bit static. So I want it to be a bit more dynamic. Same thing in the pre request script as well, you can see the, that we have snippets as well. So again, that wraps it up. Um, thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next video with Postman Runner and console.